With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP with Titans head coach Brian Callahan, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for nearly 80 years. Let's bring him on in. Coach Brian Callahan, welcome. Thanks. Good to be here. All right, let's let's dive in. Titans fall to the Colts 20-17. to It's your ball club's third one-score loss. Mm-hmm. All games that you've led, two of them in the fourth quarter. So you don't want overall frustration to creep in on your team with this having happened multiple times, because it could. But is there a balance of anger that you kind of do want to see out of your football team at a moment like this? Yeah, anger is probably the, the wrong word. I was trying to think of a I, I better think, one. Uh, I think frustration okay. is, okay. Probably, is probably more apt. I think, uh, you know, you felt it from the guys in their post game in the locker room, some of the things that, that got said. And that, that all that tells me is that we got a bunch of guys that, that care and want to win. And they're frustrated by being so close but yet not being able to get it done. Um and it's a team that I think is fully capable of getting it done. And that's, I think, what makes it frustrating. It's uh, we, we, we do a lot of things well for a lot of the game, and we have to find a way to make the game turning play, which we have yet to be able to do in these tight games in the fourth quarter. We haven't scored many points on offense. Um, we've given up points on defense. You know, our fourth quarter point differential is um, what – what looks like a one and four team would look like. And that's where we have to find a way to be better is where, where do we, where do we find that play that turns the game? Because we are close and we are doing a lot of good things, things that I feel very confident about um, things that I've, that are really positive. Um, We've improved week to week in a lot of areas. And the unfortunate part is we don't have uh, results and outcomes to show for it, but there's a lot of things that, that are going uh, in the right direction and things that I feel very confident about. And so to see guys frustrated after a game, yes, that makes me feel good that we got a bunch of guys that care and want to win and, and are willing to do what it takes to figure it out. After the game ended yesterday and since, you've been asked about a lot of specifics, specific yeah. players, specific plays, specific decisions, so on and so on. But as the head coach, do you have to zoom out a little bit and focus on more broader themes as you move your team forward? Absolutely, that's my job as as the head coach. You know, I'm not I'm the play caller, but I'm not just I'm not the offensive coordinator. That's what that's Nick's job. I don't call the defensive plays. That's Denard's job. I don't I don't manage the day to day special teams. That's Colt's job. Those are all things that I have a hand in and I and I pay attention to and I have input into. Um, but at the end of the day, there's that's. Their job is to handle those specific players and a specific outcome. My job is to make sure that every part of the of the football team and the football operation is pointed in the direction that it needs to go. And certainly, I have mo- many conversations with individual players and and all those things. But to me, there is a there is a there is a thirty thousand foot view that I have to take because that's my job and my role is to is to manage um, the entirety of the football team and not just one side of the ball or one player or one position. Uh, so those are the things that I have to I have to consciously step back from and make sure that my messaging is at, is appropriate for the entire team and where we're headed and what we need to get done. So um, that's a very different role than I've been in. I've been very offense focused. And again, even though I'm the, the play caller and I'm focused with the offense, my job is not just that. I have a lot of other things that I have to do as a head coach. And, and one of those main, main jobs is to uh, message the football team and and make sure we're all steering the same direction as not all I, I don't get I have to not get lost in the weeds sometimes uh, of offensive football because that's what I that's what I know and that's what I love and that's what I like to do and so I do have to step out of that role a lot and make sure I'm I'm doing the right thing for the entirety of the team. Well, let's talk about that offense a little bit because after the game and since really you've said that the biggest issue on offense is that you haven't been able to establish consistency from drive to drive. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you can do throughout the week to address that and help establish that consistency? There's, you have to be able to uh, set that standard of what the consistency looks like, and and we have, we've done, we've had really nice drives. We've we've been efficient, and we've mixed run and pass, and we've actioned, and we've done all the things that good offenses do. We just don't do it enough, um, and so we know what it's supposed to look like when we're when we're operating at our at our probably highest level. Um, and the key is to find that in 
practice and to find it again in games. And, and look, we look at all parts of the operation as uh, do we have too many plays in? Do we not have enough plays in? Do we have too much motion? Do we have not enough motion? It, all those things we sort of look at and we try to, we keep trying to find that sweet spot for us um, to be able to consistently play a brand of football that's going to, again, score more than 17 points. It's, you're going to have a hard time winning a lot of games scoring 17 points. You score you start getting into 21 to 24 to 27. Now you're in a range where um, you're going to be pretty competitive in the win-loss column as opposed to one win. You mentioned that you need more explosive plays, more big plays. Two longest plays yesterday were 23 yards. Those were your only two over 20. Was was that at least in part a result of the fact that the Colts were playing a type of defense that was going to take away many opportunities for big plays? Yeah, that's their M.O. That's Gus Bradley's M.O. He's always been really good at that. Forces you into playing a very patient style of football. Um, and that's what we that's what we saw. I mean, and they did it. And, and I'll give a lot of credit to Gus. I think he's a fantastic coordinator schematically. Uh, really does a nice job of, of keeping you a little bit off balance. He's, he's re- does a really good job. Um but I thought we had plenty of moments where we could have capitalized on, on looks that we had and um, we didn't quite get that done. And they do play a style that, that limits explosives, but and we had to be patient. So that's where two 14-play drives come from is that sort of patience and methodical execution. And it's hard to do that over the course of a game for seven or eight possessions. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, we have to find ways to, to be more explosive, and that's – that goes. That there's a lot of different ways that that we can probe that, but at the end of the day, if you have seven to eight explosives, that's probably going to mean you're winning the football game. Probably, it's not a hundred percent, but um, there's going to be a high likelihood that you've performed well enough with seven explosives that you've chewed up enough yards and field that you have points to show for it. It's hard to drive 14 plays against any defense in the NFL. Yeah. At, at some point, they have enough athletes. Guys are going to get you. Yeah, and it's some and and just the nature of, of NFL football is a lot, and why teams play this way sometimes is that they count on you making a mistake somewhere along the way, where you you have a false start or you have a penalty, and now you're behind the sticks, and it's just it is um, you have to be able to do that, uh, but you also have to find ways to to generate and create explosives, and and we didn't have enough of them in that game, uh, which is why we you know only scored probably 17 points is a is a big part of it. Is the current situation where this whole team finds themselves right now one where you are extra thankful maybe that you have your dad on this staff for no other reason than he's been in your shoes? He's had this role before. Mm. I would imagine there aren't too many people that you encounter just in the world who understand what it is that you are trying to kind of navigate through right now. Yeah, there's not many people yeah. that, that know it. Um it's a huge help to me. He's, his his value is as a uh, as a mentor, not just if you just take my the, the, the father son part. part out of it, but just as a professional mentor. Um, yeah, he's seen it all. He's been through every bit of this, every which way. Has learned some lessons and maybe would advise me to do something different than he did. And because he's already seen it and been through it, so he he's been a huge, huge, huge help. I, I don't know that it's yeah, it's hard to do without someone that has that experience and and I, and I lean on other guys on the staff too that also have you know the experience of being in the NFL for a long time and and seeing these these things happen where you're on a team that's that's good and they we do a lot of good things but we don't finish and the, and, our, and our results haven't come and year 1 and what that looks like there's just there's guys that have have all experienced that and I, I do lean on all those guys but uh, my dad's been pretty invaluable when it comes to working through some of these things Speaking of offensive line, you mentioned that Leroy Watson did okay at right tackle. You were not ready to say that he is the right tackle going forward. So what does Leroy or somebody else have to do to nail that spot down? Uh, the same thing that I that I said about Nick Petit was, um, you know, there just needs to be a more consistent play. And – when we have to go block somebody, we can go block them, whether it's in pass pro or the run game. There just needs to be a consistency that we haven't been able to achieve yet at that spot. And again, like I said, there was, there was Leroy had some good moments and he had some not so good moments, which is, I guess, the best way to define what okay means, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that there's, there's, we, we're just looking for 
more. We need more consistency, more performance from that spot than, than we've had thus far. And, uh, again, maybe, maybe it's still Leroy this week. Um, maybe Jalen Duncan is up to the task. Maybe, maybe Nick is up to the task. So we'll work through that over the next couple of days and, um, see where that lands. All right. Will Levis got the ball out very quickly on Sunday, which was your design because you did not want him to take hits. Levis was not sacked in the game. Were you more satisfied overall with your protection based yes. on? Okay. I, I think we I think we are making weekly improvements up front, and that's all five of those guys. Um, I think J.C. Latham, I think every week he goes out there, gets better. Um, it's never perfect. It's never going to be. Um, I think – Peter's done a nice – Peter's grown every week. I think Lloyd's been very solid for us, and I think Dylan's really come on a bit. I think he's improving. So we're after that week-to-week improvement up front, and that's – it takes time to get good up front. It takes time to, to learn a new system and new language and new ways of doing things, and, and I think those guys have done a nice job. They've put the time and, and work in, and um, the improvements has been noticeable. I mean, that's two, two back-to-back games where I thought we've been really physical and run the ball well, and, and we've been better in pass pro. Dave McGinnis on Titans Radio yesterday was impressed with the left side of your line moving some people in the run game. Was it as noticeable on tape? Oh, certainly was. Yeah, those, those guys have done a really nice job. Um, you know, that combination is one with with JC and, and Pete on the left side that we've always felt like was an advantage for us. Uh, they do a really good job. They're they're physical. They're powerful. They can move the line of scrimmage. Um, we certainly try to get behind those guys when when we can as much as possible um, but they've done a really nice job in the run game and it's it, they've opened some lanes and some really big runs for us hey titans fans with a kroger boost membership you'll score big with double fuel points free delivery and lots more go to kroger.com slash boost for details kroger official grocer of the tennessee titans tighten up home is at the forefront of all that we do It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. As we continue with Coach Brian Callahan, let's talk about some of the good things from Sunday that he mentioned. You can start. I can start. All right. Let's talk about the touchdown pass to Nick Westbrook and Mm -hmm. Kine. It was Uh, a very well-designed play. Um, Was that designed specifically for Nick? It was, yes, it was. It was um, there. There was some things about Nick being in the game, running pass, and all that stuff that that obviously we we were aware of, and um, putting him in the game, and then putting Calvin in a spot where he he would potentially get the ball was was sort of the intent. Um, and really, what the two of them did was such a great job of selling it. It really was we were trying to sell essentially throwing a bubble screen to Calvin with Nick being the point blocker, and they. They did a great job of, of selling that horizontal speed. They both are they're both flying out of there. And so the D B thinks, Oh, here comes the bubble and they both just and they react not on the pump or the or or on on anything that Will does. They react purely based on the speed that the two were running. And I and the point we made all week for Nick was like just keep stretching and as soon as you feel the stretch and he triggers, just slip him. Uh, and that's exactly what happened and, and it was it was a play I felt good about all all through the process I mean I, I told those guys that it was um, that that was going to score I mean, I knew and I felt very very good that that was going to be a touchdown um, play and it would be as open as it was in the game and so when it works like that that makes you feel good um, every night every Saturday night with the quarterbacks we as we go through the call sheet and their favorites we the last thing we do after we go through that whole process is we we, we all pick our touchdown play um, and it's just, everyone just picks what what they think the first play to score was and, and I was very adamant that that was the one that I was glad they left it for me because I picked near the end because I'm one of the older ones in the room. We picked by, you know, youngest to oldest, and that was my touchdown pick. And I felt that's how confident I felt but in is, the play. Is that mm. fair? Because you call the plays. Yeah, it that would feel feels like a you rigged. could. It feels like you could control that. Well, you'd be. I mean, Mason, Mason won. Mason won last week against Miami. The last game, Mason had had pegged that run that Taja had as the play that yeah. he thought would score. Um, so it's not fully. It's not fully rigged. I mean, I. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't. Uh, it's certainly. A pretty, it was a pretty play in practice, if I, you don't mind me saying so. so. I mean, it looked just like it did in it practice did. in the mm-hmm. game, which is always a nice feeling. Tony Pollard is someone else who has looked very pretty 
recently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like we need to talk about it because he has been the most consistent weapon on this offense. Yeah. At what point do you expect opposing defenses to start specifically planning to stop Tony Pollard? That is, the, they've done that. Um, that's not something that's uh, that's that's new. People are trying are aware now that we can, that we're a pretty solid rushing football team, and they're trying to find ways to to slow that down. Um, but Tony is so dynamic and so versatile that you don't you know we throw the ball with him in the game. He pass protects great. He never really has to ever come out, and and so there it's hard for people to pin down necessarily just because he's in. If if we're gonna run the football or not run the football, or what's he, is he gonna release in a pattern? What all those things? So that part helps him. Um, but he has been just an absolutely fantastic playmaker for our offense. He's been a great leader. Uh, he's been a great uh, locker room presence. And then on top of that, he's made, and especially yesterday, most of our plays. Um, it was fantastic. I know you have things you want to talk about, too. Yes. But before we move off of Tony Pollard, would you mind talking about his blitz pickup on Zaire Franklin just Ooh. for a second? Just to kind of talk it about so, it. it was, I mean, incredible effort. Wow. You know, we, 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 we generally would not like to be – they timed that up really nicely. We generally like to not be in an under center play action with that pressure coming right down the middle of the pocket. That's his pickup. It's a very difficult pickup from the dot where you have to wrap around the quarterback and go get it. And it was um, the effort, the intensity, and then the desire to go get him cut. I mean, we generally don't like to cut and pass pro, but to go in there and cut him and give us a chance to get the ball off – um, was was pretty remarkable effort, and he had a second one later in the game too, uh, in on a third down. Um, that's what makes him so unique. Is he is a he is a three down, three pronged back that is rare that can do everything at a really really high level. Pass pro, run routes and catch, and then run the football. So um, he he is he's a he's I'm so happy that he's on our football team because he's a really really good football player. You mentioned Tajay Spears' hamstring makes him week to week. If Spears can't go at Buffalo, will Julius Chestnut get a chance to pick up some of those reps? Uh, right now, he's in line for that. Um, you know, obviously, we'll do our due diligence on what is available um, out there in the world to us. Just because if it if it ends up being an absence longer than a week or two, we want to make sure we have a uh, a third back that's maybe played in the NFL as well. So we'll we'll see where that lands. There's no um, no full answer for that at this point. Um, but certainly Julius will have his, his opportunities to, to carry the ball a bit more um, because, again, no, no, you know, we don't want to have Tony carry the ball 30 times. That's not really his thing. Now he'll do it, um, but I think you still need to have some division of labor in the running back room over time. So we'll see where that lands, but Julius should have an opportunity. Jarvis Brownlee um, at corner. What a game. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. From just our perspective, looked like he played really well. When you watch the tape, maybe even more impressive. Yeah, he was fantastic uh, for for a young player. Uh, and he's he's been he's always been a guy that we felt like had the potential uh, to be a good player. And now that he's getting an opportunity due to injury, he's really uh, shown what he's capable of. And and the key for him now is going to be do it again. You know that that's what separates guys in the league is. Really, really nice – building into a really nice performance, had a really, really nice performance against the Colts, and now can you do that multiple weeks in a, in a row? Um, but, yeah, he's, he was he was fantastic. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing – Ticket that works. Expect the expected. Seat geek. Seat geek. <laughs> Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. So we're turning the page now. Titans Let's take the on the Buffalo Bills next. You've seen Buffalo a lot from your time in Cincinnati. Yes. What about this 2024 Bills team is different or the same from what you have experienced? They are a they they they're running the ball well. They're a physical football team. Um you know, they they they're playing a really aggressive brand of defense, which they sort of always have, but um, they've had a little bit of change in the staff there as well from last year to this year with Eric Washington leaving and go to the, the Bears. And I think, um, you know, Coach McDermott's probably taking a more active hands-on approach to it. But, you know, they got good players. they got good scheme. 
they're they're a, a team that is battle tested. They know what it looks and feels like, and and they are a contending AFC team. Um, so we got to work cut out for us in what is maybe one of the best environments in football to go play hard, difficult, but really enjoyable to go play in an environment like Buffalo. So um, yeah, we got we got our hands full against a, against a team that I think is uh, playing pretty pretty good football and is one of the better teams in our conference brian callahan thanks for the time can't wait to see you in buffalo this sunday and we appreciate you joining us as always thanks for having me that's the otp with amy wells and mike keith and brian callahan thanks for joining us